Hey everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5 where I give you the 5 biggest stories from Nintendo in the last 24 hours in, I don't know, roughly 8 minutes or so. We also have some giveaways going on as well if you want to head on to the pinned comment to check it out. If you enjoyed the news and you're really excited, I would appreciate it if you would just hit that subscribe button as let's grow this show and this channel together. But you know what needs to shrink a little bit more? The news. Let's get right into it. You are watching Nintendo Prime, and at this channel on Monday through Friday, we drop five videos going over the five latest stories in the last 24 hours revolving around Nintendo, the biggest of those stories. We also, on the weekends, end up dropping other types of content, including unboxings and Prime Answers episode that goes out every single Saturday where we answer all of your questions questions. If you enjoy Nintendo news and you want to get the latest updates, all you need to do is subscribe to Nintendo Prime. So Fear Effect Reinvented got a brand new trailer drop today for Nintendo Switch. Now this game was actually announced for Switch back in 2017 and is a remake of a remake of a PlayStation 1 game. So, hey look, I think it looks actually pretty solid. Why we haven't heard about it for five years is beyond me, but we're seeing it now and what's notable at the end of the trailer is, is it does say coming sooner than you think. I don't know if I even thought this game was still coming. So does that mean a shadow drop in 2022, some early 2023 release? Are we going to hear about this at a Nintendo Direct or something? Beats me. But hey, we did get a little bit of a teaser trailer today, and it's good to at least see an update on this game for the first time in five years. So one announcement today has people being really, really, really angry. And that is because Denuvo has announced that they have released a product for Switch that can be easily implemented by developers. Uh, for those who don't know what Denuvo is, because if you only play on Switch, maybe it's just something you're not familiar with. It is a DRM, anti-cheat, anti-hacking, anti-piracy application applied to video games on PC. It has actually gotten a lot of negative feedback over the years, not because it's attempting to stop piracy, that's a totally separate argument. Legitimate consumers are being negatively impacted, such as constant online check-ins while you're playing on a verified Steam account that owns the game. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. There's also been performance hits to many, many games that have used Denuvo, and this is on PC, where maybe there is extra resources. It's a really big pain in the butt. There's actually a whole lot of threads and videos and articles out there talking about the negative effects that Denovu has actually had on legitimate consumers while barely actually stopping piracy in the first place as hackers work their way around these anti-cheat measures and end up with a better experience than paid people. It's just ridiculous. Well, obviously Nintendo Switch has a problem with piracy. Every game is pirated and out on the internet even before the game releases. And there would be cool if something could be done about that. And they're saying that their tools can now be easily implemented by any Switch developer. And the concern is obviously, well, Switch has limited resources. So if this is what it did to PC, what the hell is it going to do to Switch? And how is it going to negatively impact us legitimate console, you know, lugging around gamers? I don't really have a say in any of of this and I just hope for the best that it's cool to try to have some anti-piracy measures in place. I don't know that Denovo has a great track record so do I trust what they've made for Switch to not negatively impact legitimate consumers? Absolutely not. I also have trust issues with a lot of things. As an example, this Mario plush right here keeps staring into my soul every time I'm editing videos and it just makes me not trust this bastard. This next story is really sort of surprising because Masahiro Sakurai has released a new YouTube channel called Masahiro Sakurai on Creating Games. The purpose of the channel is to explore and teach game design principles and help the common person understand what it takes to create games in a simple to digest and easy to understand format. He feels that doing it this way on YouTube will have a much larger reach than speaking at the Game Developers Conference or giving lectures at various game design schools as he has been requested to do many, many times. Plus, nobody has ever considered people with no experience making games rather than those already in school for it, and he wants to include them too. It's essentially a way to teach people at least some 
aspects of creating video games for free and I think that that's really cool and clearly he must have a passion for it because the video he put together for it that's about seven minutes long is really really well thought out so I definitely encourage you guys to go subscribe to that channel if you're interested in game design and creating video games and you want a little bit of insight and learning from a master like Masahiro Sakurai obviously is going to come with some benefits such as learning the way that he views video games and what makes them fun. So do you guys remember when we actually gave Nintendo a little bit of credit for Shiver from Splatoon 3, a member of Deep Cut, the new crew that's gonna be all over our screens nonstop in Splatoon 3 for potentially being non-gendered or something to that effect because there were zero gender references to Shiver either in the footage Nintendo did when they unveiled Shiver to all of the website descriptions in all of the different languages. In addition to this, Shiver's color palette with the purples and the yellows are, really match a lot of color palettes that represent non-binary people. So what's interesting here is that it definitely appeared that without saying anything, Shiver might have been Nintendo's first non-binary character. And we gave Nintendo credit for this for not treating it like it's a big deal. If Shiver is non-binary, who really cares? It's just not a big deal. It's just normal and accepted. Well, Shiver is female. It's actually not really a problem that, that Shiver is female. It's more so that there's not really an explanation for why Nintendo seemingly went out of their way to remove gender references to Shiver when now we have some gameplay information out there that shows that Shiver clearly is female. This was confirmed by Nintendo representatives as well as actual gameplay of the game so shiver is female not a problem with another female character obviously the non-binary crowd is going to be a little bit disappointed at least i know people thought this was actually a really progressive move for nintendo since hey you know they're a very traditional company and you know don't really dive into this stuff that often but whatever shiver's female so I guess that's a story today. Our last story also deals with Splatoon 3 because as I mentioned, a bunch of gameplays out there because gameplay previews have dropped and that means, oh boy, we got some new splattering information for you guys. And no, it's not the kind that's coming from my pants. It's actually coming from Nintendo. Let's go. So some new information on Splatoon 3 that we could probably learn this weekend, if not next month. There are over 25 weapon sets, including all of the old weapons in the game, small fry, the little buddy is available to use in single player. You can throw golden eggs in Salmon Run. In Salmon Run, there's a new boss called Mudmouth, and you have to fill it with ink to destroy it. Seasonal trends will completely vanish when new seasons launch. Swim form is the new name for the squid slash octo form from the prior games. The usual turf war spawn point is gone. You now launch in from the sky, which I think we kind of expected. You get accolades at the end of matches, even if you lose. I kind of think it's sort of like achievements. That's pretty neat. Table turf battle is a new mode exclusive to single player against CPU at launch, but there will be a future update that will enable full multiplayer with that new mode. So there is a brand new mode. Remember Salmon Run? Well, now we got this new mode as well with Table Turf Battle. Look, I think that's really cool. I'm glad to see they're adding a bunch of new content. A lot of the previews for those curious are just saying, hey, this feels like Splatoon 2, except a lot more polished, a lot more well put together. And basically it's the ultimate Splatoon game. Again, this is just hands-on impressions from a preview event. Not necessarily with the full game in hand, but hey, you know what? It's really, really cool that we're getting this information on Splatoon 3, and I hope to be splatting many of you this upcoming weekend at that Splatfest. Anyways, folks, I'm Nintendo Rubble Jazz from Nintendo Prime, and let's get to splatting our way into the Nintendo Prime podcast tonight. Be sure to tune in to the Nintendo Prime podcast channel. Link down below, and we have a special guest coming on, a really big Pokemon creator. I'm really hoping you guys are excited for that, along with Mike Odyssey and the rest. It's going to be a really amazing podcast and we'll catch all of you guys there.